Intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting help us live longer and decrease the risk of age-related diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and cancer. First, we need to find out our chronotype to know which meal to skip. Never break the fast with sugar or flour-based products. The best method is to do random days of different types of intermittent fasting. On this channel, I share science-based solutions for everyday life. My name is André Dorado and I am an integrative health expert. I've been doing intermittent fasting, exercise while fasting, and prolonged fasting since I was a teenager. I've been giving lectures and courses for almost 20 years on fasting. So I think I, I have a lot of experience and scientific knowledge on it. In this video, I will explain in an easy way what fasting is and how to do it. There are two types of fasting, intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting. Prolonged fasting is when we are without eating for two days or more. So before doing prolonged fasting, we need to learn how to do intermittent fasting. And that's why in this video, I will focus and talk only about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is not a new invention. In fact, we've been doing this for millions of years, like all animals, when you couldn't find food. If we weren't able to go many hours or days without eating, we would have been extinct. We are prepared to survive, to activate genes and primitive mechanisms that allow us to adapt, called the hermetic effect, which in simple words mean that what doesn't kill us, makes us stronger. To increase the chances of survival, the brain becomes more active, focused, less stressed. Vision, hearing and smell become more accurate. Oxidation and inflammation reduces. If we slow it down and become lethargic, we would die. The body becomes more active, stronger, blood pressure improves, insulin works better, metabolism increases and we burn more fat. All this happens because when we are fasting we experience huge stress also called as positive stress. When we eat, we activate the vagotonic nervous system and become more sleepy and focused and procrastinated. The intensity of these symptoms depends on the amount of food and calories ingested. Furthermore, cell repair and growth process only happens when we are not eating or digesting food. Therefore, fasting increases growth hormone and autophagy, a cell cleaning and recycling process resulting in rejuvenation. With weekly practice, we improve gut health, the skin is more beautiful, we control inflammatory and autoimmune diseases, the heart works better, the risk of diabetes decreases and the risk of cancer too. Intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting help us live longer and decrease the risk of age-related diseases such as Alzheimer's disease and cancer. Another thing that I really like is that it improves my mood and mental performance, but you don't need to do intermittent fasting to be healthy. I know many people that are over 90 years old that are healthy and never done it. This is just a scientifically proven method of improving health and longevity. And some people, for epigenetic reasons, trauma or hyperstress, cannot do it or should not do it, and they are right for them. Fortunately, most people can do this. However, for some, it's easy to do. And for others, it seems like an impossible mission. Why? Because of the first rule of intermittent fasting. The most important thing to be able to practice intermittent fasting without having a drop in energy, dizziness, irritability or other discomfort is to have a good energy management of blood sugar. For this, our food must be ketogenic, paleo, low-carb or Mediterranean-like diet which in slowly absorbed carbohydrates, such as sweet potatoes, carrots, tomatoes, and other vegetables and nuts. If you eat bread, cookies, cakes, sweets, pizza, and soft drinks many times a week, your blood sugar will behave like a roller coaster, sometimes very high, sometimes very low. This will lead to hunger, weakness, poor concentration, inflammation, and insulin resistance. As a result, you cannot use energy efficiently and you will experience tiredness, headaches, irritability and hunger if you don't eat every 3 hours. 
Watch my video, bad carbs, good carbs, to understand it better. The dietary changes of the past decades created a pandemic of diseases and decreased our ability to fast. You don't need to stop eating bread and cookies, but you need to find out your limit to be able to do intermittent fasting, which should also be the right amount to not develop diseases and die younger. It's not so important our last meal, but how you eat throughout the week. Having a paleo, ketogenic, low-carb or Mediterranean-style diet allow us to fast whenever we want. So, if you suffer from a sugar roller coaster, start replacing bread and cookies with nuts, seeds, sweet potatoes, carrots and other vegetables and fruits. Eat good protein sources like fish and eggs and good fats like coconut, olive oil and omega-3. After one or two weeks, try cutting out snacks between meals and drink only water, hot teas and coffee. You did it! Great! Now it's time to increase the time without eating to get some benefits. Start by not eating for just 12 hours, for example between dinner and the first meal of the next day. It doesn't have many beneficial effects, but it's better than nothing. 16 hours of fasting and 8 hours eating window. This has all the benefits of intermittent fasting. It protects us against obesity, diabetes and chronic inflammation, for example. First, we need to find out our chronotype to know which meal to skip. If we are night owls, we should count 16 hours from dinner to the first meal of the next day. For example, if we dinner at 8 pm, our first meal should be at 12 pm of the next day. If we are early birds, we should count 16 hours backwards from breakfast to know when should be our last meal. For example, if we breakfast at 8 am, our last meal should be at 4 pm of the last day. If you want to know more about chronotypes, watch my video about this topic and you understand better which chronotype you are. 18 hours of fasting and a 6 hours heating window. We get much more health benefits than doing 16 hours, but first try to master 16 before trying 18. 20 hours of fasting and 4 hours of eating window. Known as the warrior diet, it's an extreme form of intermittent fasting. Practitioners of the warrior diet say that humans are natural night eaters and that eating at night allows the body to gain nutrients in accordance with its circadian rhythms. Is not entirely true. As I explained before, it depends on the chronotype and we all have a different genetically predetermined one. In a 24-hour fast, we only eat once a day. It's even more extreme, but it's the one that gives us the greatest hormetic effect, therefore the greater benefits. Recently I saw a podcast with David Sinclair, a world authority in healthy aging research and the author of Lifespan and he said to practice this type of fast. Time restricting eating is the same thing as intermittent fasting. Different names for the same thing. It is a 5 days fasting mode based on consumption of healthy products low in calories. The body doesn't recognize that it's being fed and goes into fasting mode. It was developed and te clinically tested at the University of Southern California by Dr. Walter Longo. It is a kind of caloric restriction diet. It is a diet in which we eat 25 to 60 percent less proteins, carbs and fats than we need, but containing all the essential micronutrients. It is harder to practice than intermittent fasting, but is scientifically dem demonstrated that it can reverse genetic errors, increase longevity and delay age-related diseases. But we can achieve the same results with intermittent fasting, and it's easier. During fast, we should only drink water, coffee, herbal infusions or electrolytes. We shouldn't eat anything, but sometimes I sweet my coffee and I notice that it doesn't interfere with my fast. Maybe a small amount of sugar does not affect us, as in the fasting mimic diet. 
If you have to take supplements, they must be ingested with food, so take them during the feeding period. Have you ever seen a lion who doesn't eat for a week not running after a zebra because he didn't eat a pre-workout snack? Do you know what is the only animal in the world who thinks he needs to eat to move his ass? The 21 century chubby homo sapiens. So yes we can, but after relearning how to fast first. It helps us to burn more fat and have so many more health benefits. And the best time to do it is exactly before the uh, first meal. The body should see food as a reward. Or exactly before the last meal. For example, I lunch around 12.30 p.m. and dinner around 8.30 p.m. I go to the gym around 6.30 p.m., 7 p.m. and I do weightlifting, cycling, running and swimming mainly. So with five to six hours after the last meal. Sometimes I do, I exercise with 12 hours fasting, other times with 16 hours, 25 hours or even 48 hours and I never felt bad. If you want to know more about the benefits of exercise while fasting, just write me in the comments below and I record a video about it. Remember the first rule of intermittent fasting? It's the same here. Avoid breaking the fast, eating a lot of bread and cookies. According with scientific studies, it can increase insulin resistance. So start with a salad, a soup, fruit with low glycemic load, good proteins like a grilled fish, grass-fed meat or eggs. You can eat some carbs like potatoes, even better, sweet potatoes or all kinds of vegetables dressed with healthy fats like olive oil. But the most important thing here is never break the fast with sugar or flour-based products. Some people like to do the 5-2 scheme, 5 normal days and 2 intermittent fasting. Others like to fast every day. I think we should listen to our body and if we want to eat, we should eat, and if we don't want to eat, we should skip that meal. But if we always want to eat, or if we are eating too much quantity, we should force ourselves to do at least one of two days of fast per week. But if fasting is not for you, just choose another method to boost your health and strength. One thing that you should know is the body tends to adapt and the weight loss slows down if that is your goal. So, if you want to do fast to increase your mental and physical performance, to be more stronger, more resilient and to control better your weight, the best method is to do random days of different types of intermittent fasting. This way the body never adapts. For example, I do 16 to 18 hours every day and one or two days a week I do a 24 hours fast. And at weekends, sometimes I do three or more meals because I'm with my family or friends. When I do a 24 hours fast, I tend to decide on the same day, so my body doesn't have time to adapt. And most of the days it's just because I don't have angry at lunchtime and I decide to skip that meal. No one suffer or feel angry when doing intermittent fasting the way I talk. At mealtime, our body clock reminds us sometimes, but that sensation disappears if you wait. Well, I also practice prolonged fasting and I'm going to publish a video in the next weeks about my last experience fasting for three days, drinking only water, coffee and herbal infusions. It's harder, but the rewards are even bigger. You must watch that video. Subscribe so you don't miss out when I publish it. And you know, until there, be healthier, wiser and stronger.